to start your managu farming business, of course you will need quality seeds, you will need uh, manure, a lot of manure because it's a heavy consumer, and also you will need land or somewhere, a media where you will be planting your managu. You will first of all sow your seeds into a seed bed uh, for one month, and then you will transplant the seedlings to your farm or your vertical gardens. Uh, this veg these seedlings will be there for one month where they will be harvested for the first time. And this vegetable will be harvested on weekly basis for the next four months. For you to harvest these four months, what you will require is heavy feeding on your managu. You will need a lot of water because it's a, it's a heavy feeder. And it's also infested a lot uh, by red spider mite and also the amphids. So you will need to make sure that your managu is not infested. This infestation causes stress to the managu that will mean it will start flowering earlier. There are many varieties of managu. They are the bitter ones, they are the mild ones, and they are the, the, the general managu, the, the new managu that is not bitter. Uh, in our region, we prefer producing the giant leaf, the giant managu. It is mild, and uh, this is because this is what our market demands. Uh, this managu, this variety of managu, it is lessly uh, affected by the amphids and the red spider mites. So it is also a, an advantage for you as a farmer. So before you do uh, venture into the farming and production of managu, you need to know the variety that is good for your, for your, your, your region and also your customer, what do they demand. They are customers that want the bitter variety and they are ones which demand the, 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 the mild variety. So understand your customer demands, then you come back to farming. For you to transplant your seed, first after a month of sowing your seed, it will be ready for transplant. So you will take your seedlings to the place you are prepared. And how do you prepare where you transplant your managu? You make furrows. Furrows of about uh, 10 centimeter, uh, 15 centimeters to whatever length you want. And the spacing is 10 centimeters of each seedling 10 centimeters apart, 10 centimeters apart. This will stay there for one month with a lot of water, feed it a lot of manure and water, and then after one month they will be ready for your first harvest. After that you will be harvesting on weekly basis. Do suckers. These suckers are what you will grow and what you will be harvesting on weekly basis. So the, the healthier the, 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 your soil is, the more suckers your managu will have, the more harvest you will have. When you prepare where you want to, transpl to transplant your managu, in those furrows you need to feed the furrows the manure, a lot of manure. The manure should be filling the furrow completely and then after that you mix with soil, little bit of soil. So the ratio of manure to the soil after mixing it should be 1 is to 3. 1 is to 3. So after that you will water the, the furrow very well. And then after that you will transplant in the evening. You transplant your managu in the evening and also irrigate your managu in the evening. So the management practices of managu, once you've transplanted your managu, the managu will be having competitors, that is the weeds. The weeds will be competing with the managu to feed on the manure. So for you to keep your food for your managu, you need to make sure that there are no, there are no weeds. You scout, this is by scouting your farm and making sure you pick all the weeds that are there. Also, weeding will help in control of disease and pests because weeds are what attracts the, the pests and the disease in your farm. Uh, you also scout to see whether your managu are infested. If they are infested, since we said we are using organic methods, there are ways that we, 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 we use organic things to, to make pesticides. And if uh, it is out of management, you can, you can pluck the, the, the affected managu and throw it away, far away from the farm. When you're, you're scouting for pests and diseases, you should be looking for, for pests, you should be looking at amphids, red spider mites, thrips, 
And when you are looking for diseases, you should be looking at uh, things like uh, downhill midriff, and uh, mostly it's downhill midriff that affects the, 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 the managu. How do you tell that your managu is affected by spider mite, for example? Spider mites are very little spiders that you will see behind the leaf, the lower part of the leaf. So how to tell your managu is infested by disease or pests? Mostly, when your managu is affected or infested by pests, it will fold its leaf like this. You see this, how it has folded, it's not the same as this. So, once you identify, you will go below the lower part of the leaf, open it and check what is infesting the leaf. This one was infested by the red spider mite, but after using the, 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 the home remedies that we use to organically killing pests, you can see all of them have been cleared. We don't have any of them. In the next video, we will show you how to make those pesticides. This leaf is greatly affected by amphids and is what is causing it to fold itself. When you look inside, you can see those are amphids. They circle the syrup of the, the, the managu leaf, causing the leaf to fold. So for you to, when you identify this, you need to make the pesticide and spray on your vegetable at the evening or very early in the morning. Reasons we will explain to you in the video when we are making the pesticides, why you need to spray in the morning and in the evening. One of the diseases that affect managu is downy mildew, and this is how you identify it. You will find the leaf that of a managu has started to turn yellow, and it has some spots, like rusty spots on the leaf. That shows that that leaf, uh, that managu is infected by, by downy mildew. What you can do is pluck all the leaves that are affected and clear them from the farm because if you leave them the disease is communable it will transfer to another plant for you to produce managu in a half an acre of a piece of land you will need a half a kg of managu that is the best variety is the east africa in our region uh, the farm to be tilled and furrows to be made, that will cost you about 3,000 shillings. You will also need uh, transplanting, and the transplanting cost will cost you about 2,000 shillings. Uh, you will also need manure. The manure that uh, you can apply there will cost you about 5,000 to 10,000, depending on the, the, the area you are and depending on the nutritional value, level of your, of your soil. You will need about 3,000 to till your land and also you will need on top of that 2,000 for the transplanting of the seedlings to the furrows. You will also need uh, water. It is very important to do a soil test. This is something you, I also do. You can do for you to know what you need, what nutrients you need in your, in your soil. And for you farming organically without using the chemical, you often need to be aware of what nutrients are traceable in your soil before you plant. When doing soil tests, you can, uh, you can contact CropNut. They do soil tests, but depends. For disease, pest and disease, they charge 5,000. But for nutrition of the soil, they charge only 1,500 shillings. And they come with a recommendation on what you should use on your farm. The advantage of using crop nut is because their results are instant. They come to the, with the equipment on your farm. They do you a soil test. They give you analysis there, there. And as a farmer, there is no time wasted for you to, to plant your, your crops. You know what you need instantly. For half an acre, you can produce about 400 kilos of anagu. That is depending on how you've nutrition that nutrition you've given to your vegetable and this goes you can harvest at least a minimum of two times a month so my most mostly my vegetables are picked by the brokers I, I have three markets i have the market that takes the grade one it's the high market i also have brokers who come for the second quality and there are brokers who come for the third quality the old managu 
at a lower price. So each grade, we grade our managu and we sell each grade. Each grade has a different price. Uh, grading depends on the time the managu was planted and also the management of the managu. Because very well managed managu will be attractive and like the uh, poorly managed managu which will be infested and will be seeding and will be will have turned the color from green to bluish. The price range of the managu will be of highs of 50 shillings per kilo to the low of 10 shillings per kilo depending on the quality. The quality of your, your produce will determine the market that you will attract. So for you to attract a better market, you also need to know that what the market wants. Understand the, the market target that you're looking for and then understand what the type or variety of managu they want, how they want it harvested, when they want it packaged and, when, and how they want it produced because each market will tell you what they want and what they don't want. You'll find that people who want the organic produced managu are willing to buy the managu at a higher cost of up to 80 shillings a kilo, unlike the fertilizer, the conventional one, that will go up to 30 shillings a kilo. We do training for people who want more information. You can contact us through our page on Facebook, Yenyeji Veggies, 0758 3227, that is our number, call us and we can organize something nice for you. For everyone who have watched this video, you have a token and the charges will be greatly reduced. So thank you for watching this video. Remember to subscribe, like, comment and share. In our next video, we'll be learning how to produce saga, sageti, that's the spider plant. So tune in for that.